has no basis. It has no legitimacy other than pure force. Now, you might say, well, that's exactly where they're getting to with the way they've militarised their policy or their police forces, but I, I beg to differ. For the most part, their framework, their corporate framework, still depends on the pre-existence of the public acts, the public rules of the estate. So if you are an ally of the Queen of Great Britain, then the corporations cannot declare war on you without declaring war on themselves. They can't declare war on you because you're an ally to the foundation that keeps them in existence. They can't declare you an enemy of the state if you're an ally of the Queen of Great Britain and her heirs and successors. If you openly establish a, a position of peaceful habitation. Now this has been, I know this is mind-numbing, the games they play. I know it, it, it seems perverse the extent to which they go. But think about the logic. If the corporation needs the estate, and if the highest estate ultimately is a commonwealth of the monarch, being the, the, the king or the queen of creatures, the great chain of being, then the corporation can't declare war on an ally of that superstructure without biting off its own hand. Because in fact, the estate and indeed the queen still has real positions in power that can be called upon to hold the corporation to account. And this is the key to all those myths and legends of people calling provost marshals or you know, Queen's uh, uh, guard or other people into court that in fact it is not a myth, it is a fact. If the corporation is declaring war or a war against an ally or the courts themselves are out of control and you are a declared and affirmed ally as a foreign head of state, that's exactly what the general executor and guardian is, as you can see, then absolutely you can call on those powers. Well, we've got a lot still to go through and I want to keep going. You can see that there's a lot here. So let me keep going uh, on this. Uh, we have Article 2, fiduciaries. I'm not going to go into the details of fiduciaries, but you can see that the fiduciaries which help form the government of the estate is clearly identified. Uh, and then we go to Article 3, Agents. you notice the definition there or the meaning of the agents. And in the section of agents, we direct the general executive and guardian to appoint certain agents. And some of those agents that are uh, need to be appointed is a registrar, a clerk of records, and a bailiff. You've probably heard these terms before in a court. Well, these are legitimate positions, these are legitimate agents appointed by warrant and they perform key parts and they can be a person, so they can be a corporate, they can be an existing. You can go and appoint the local sheriff as your bailiff under warrant and say, I empower you to protect the property of the estate. That is a legitimate agreement under your will that the general executor and, and uh, guardian can do. I also want to make the point that we talk about public record. The, re the registrar publishes uh, instruments when the clerk publishes instruments. I mean, it is the public record. Article 4, the compensation and schedule of fees. Of course, is important that there is identified a schedule of fees. And then we get into covering this tricky issue of how do we establish and dispose of assets even though we don't have a complete picture yet of the trust. And here, we do it by this way. Article 5, we identify the family trust. And we make clear that uh, upon the 
lawful investiture of the Office of General Executor that this trust is formed. In number two, we say, considering the proper completion of tracing accounting may require some time, you direct that sufficient property is conveyed to the trust and that an income is provided. And then you also can make known that it is not greater than another figure. That's entirely up to you. And I'm sure we'll get examples back from from a number of you that show us how other people have uh, used this section and, and modified it. And then we talk about those uh, that we'd like to give sums to when we make that clear. Now again, this section is entirely up to you, but the point that I'm showing here is it is possible to express how to establish the framework to administer benefits to the family, to friends, to others, without having a complete picture yet of your estate. That's what I'm trying to show here. You can make it clear in the will, you can give confidence to the role of the general executor and the fiduciaries to fulfill your will, and you can do it without necessarily having the complete picture, without saying, I give 50% to my family. Well, we repeat the same thing when we speak in Article 6 of the Foundation Trust, and we do it in Article 7. Then we close off the will uh, with standard words in witness whereof, yada, 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 the thumbprint signature, and then we have the attestation or the affirmation of the, uh, of the witnesses. We've listed four there. I'd suggest that you want to have a number. It says uh, domicile that. Uh, we probably remove that, but the remainder of that is fine. And of course, under their system, a will must always be sealed by a notary. And, and that is unavoidable. Even a private will must be sealed by a notary. Remember the trick here. We'll get to it in a second. The trick here is that we've always been led to believe that when a will has been signed and sealed and then uh, handed or deposited in custody, to a solicitor that a will is perfected. And in reality, we spoke about this last week, in reality, the corporate system, in order to get us all into a state of intestacy, has said that unless that will is recorded in the public record, then you do not have a will. A will has not been published. Uh, the existence of a will has not been published. So they trick us. The bar tricks us to go through all this rigmarole, to believe we have a will, when in actual fact, no one is claimed to have a will. That's why it goes to probate. If you go to probate court, which is really called a surrogate court, you have no will. So we still need to recognize their rules, and the rule is that it needs to be sealed by a notary. Well, in the time, I'm not going to have time to go through the recital of terms, but have a look at them. They're very, very valuable to go through and have a look. Uh, and I suggest you have a look through and you'll see that we make very clear. Where do these terms come from? Well, these terms are the terms that are sought to be the standardized terms in uh, the United States, the United East States, for probate. So we have taken those terms, we have added some terms, but made it clear what is meant by this will so that there can be no disputing the legitimacy of the will so that this will can never be questioned and therefore must be subject to probate as disputed. Well, in the time available, and I'll try and wrap it up in the next few minutes, it's been a lot of information as you can see, but I'll try and wrap this up now in the next 10 minutes. And I want to go through the public notice and the recording, the, the public record of the will. And I want to cover a few points that a number of you have discovered even more research in the last week. There is a second document there. And I'm not going to go through it, but there's a second document in the link. And that document is the example or the notice of existence of will. Now, what we're suggesting is, is this. Whenever the existing Roman system wishes to place something on the public record, or in their case, in the corporate record now, 
they will publish some formal notice in a newspaper, which, which is a newspaper that is identified as a gazette. They will usually post it on one of their notice boards or boards that are recognised as a place of public notice and public record. Typically, uh, these notice boards will be in their own buildings. Uh, a church notice board is, is still, even today, one of the highest uh, locations of public record. If you place on a church notice board a notice that is public record, has been from the very beginning. Uh, also, uh, you will find that they will um, uh, have in their uh, recorders, in their various places of recording, and indeed, even in the courts, there is the opportunity for public record. There is no need under the acts and statutes of their system, there is no need for you to physically attempt to have your complete will and testament recorded as a public record. There's no need. Instead, all that is required is notice of the existence of the will and testament and its location where it can be found to be given as public notice. That is all that is required. That it exists, that it's been perfected, and that it can be located. If those things are made known in public, then that notice is the public recording of the existence of the will. Now, if you have the public recording of the existence of the will, then under the laws of the Roman system, your will cannot be uh, invalidated. It means that there is no requirement for a probate court because you did not die intestate. It also means that you are no longer intestate the moment your will and notice of your will has been published. And this, I believe, is a trick that they do. When they appoint officials, when they give public notice, in a sense, they are giving public notice that those officials uh, have will, and if those officials have will, they cannot be considered intestate. So they've been tricking us for a long, long time for all of us to be without will and for their people to be the only ones that have will. As to the specifics and what one does, as I said, the current system uses a multiplicity, and I believe we need to do the same. Now, the good news is Eucadia is developing on the workbenches an entire public notice and public record system, and that is a global system. So we will be able to provide a public record and public notice for each of you on the publication of your will. And I, I believe that that is one of the first and most important forms of public record and public notice that we can provide our members is the existence, legitimate existence of your will. The second is that we can provide the registration of your will so that there is a public register recording, public from the point of view of Eucadia, private from the perspective of, of, uh, of the Roman cult. And providing that system is maintained there is a certainty where one can go and find your will. There's no mystery. It's not hidden under a rock. Uh, it's in a legitimate place. It's, it's stored. It's on a register so there can be no disputing. So this, I believe, again, will be a very important benefit to our members. And it is a matter of priority. While we cannot provide a full array of public record and a full array of public notice, the first that we wish to provide to members is to ensure within the next two weeks the public record and the public notice system of Eucadia makes available the proper recording of our will and the notice of existence of our will and the registration of our will. In the meantime, there's, as I say, uh, the option of having uh, notice done in a, in a gazette, public uh, notice on their notice boards, and of course, the registration, the court recorders. In their statute, it was made very specific that the uh, registration in the court records was a key part of, of the existence of a will. And 
the point I will just wrap up with.